look, everyone. It's your host, Aaron Ross. Oh! <laughs> hey, look at us, friends. Hey, welcome to Who's the Ross? I'm Aaron Ross, and tonight I'll be your comedy boss. Welcome over to Mom's house, everybody. Thank you guys so much for coming back as we celebrate our 800th episode with a two-part special. Yes, tonight is part two. As you can tell, I'm laying down on the job, literally, because only hours ago, uh, well, 22 hours ago, we finished our first of 800 episode celebrations, Uh, but now we're back with you guys. We're super stoked to be here. As you can see, look at this lineup, my friends. Look at these sweet guests. Slim Kid Trey from the far side. A hip-hop legend comes back for his seventh appearance, plus our band leaders over the past decade. Scotty Wittenberg, JP Downer, Justin Chase give the greatest perspective on what it's like to work on a live late-night talk show. They're joining us for a band leader roundtable, plus tons of awesome games you guys get to play with us, archival footage, and a few sweet surprises, too. Now, as I'm laying down on the job, As I said before, I didn't just earn this moment down here in what looks like a Chuck E. Cheese ball pit, or I'm calling the Who's the Ross baller pit. Uh, But also, I know when you do something like an 800th show, you don't actually have to go out and tell jokes or, you know, do a bunch of bits. I mean, the writers still wrote everything I'm saying right now. But when you get to 800... This is the moment where you get to reminisce, look back, and do something that in entertainment, oh, it's just the best. It's called a clip show. That's right, everybody. Not for the whole show, but for tonight's monologue. And we asked you guys in our weekly challenge, what are your favorite memories over 800 episodes of Who's the Ross? And we had an overwhelming response of submissions you guys sent in. We had so many, and we did some last night, we're doing some tonight. And so now you're going to take us down memory lane. You're our tour guide of what you want to see. Please enjoy our 800 Memories Challenge. Take it away, you time on the Aaron Ross show is being able to stick fire in that mouth. Just stick it in his mouth. Just stick it in his mouth. It's definitely hot. Ah! Holy fuck. Oh my god, you can't see this on TV. I feel like a circus gynecologist. Fuck! My favorite Who's the Ross memory is Dante's 2015 Tatas for Toys show, Y'all Ready for Tits. All right, next up, it's our Make It Rain Deer, Y'all Ready for Tits. My favorite moment from Who's the Ross is when Aaron Ross went toe to toe with his most royal majesty. The Lord of the Underrealm. You know, you kind of have like a sexual golem thing going on. Lord of the Cock Rings. <laughs> send, I'm sent that one over to you. Uh, Give us a kiss, right? Do it! <laughs> oh! Oh! He did it! <laughs> oh, this is happening now. What do you think about that, Your Majesty? That seems right up your alley. Well, it's about time. I've been up here long enough. Get it in here! <laughs> My goodness. Things get weird. Best episode ever is when you had Fat Lip and uh, DJ Newmark from Jurassic 5. That shit was dope. Can't keep running away. 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 Hey! What up, what up? Let's hear from Fat Lip, come on! Yeah! No more? I saw you, you came down the aisle, and I was just like,
like, who is this charismatic mofo? This is a home run hitting show! We love it! Yeah. <laughs> bam, bam! Thank you, Yams! What's this show? Who's the boss? It's fantastic! Six, boom, boss! Ross, Ross, Ross! Be my barbecue, My dog. Wacky wild I know it's good when the band is laughing like Beavis and Butthead behind you. Oh <laughs> Creep corn! Ah! Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. First time I ever met Aaron, I was slated to do a card trick on stage with him. So I come up on stage with the deck of cards. He proceeds to take the deck from me, shuffles it, and says, Oh no, let me show you how it's done, son. And he proceeds to read my mind. He figures out what color every card is without seeing a single one. And then I look at one card and he tells me everything about it. Value, color, suit without seeing it. And he still won't tell me how he did it, the jerk. Who's the Ross? He's the Ross. And I got to say my favorite moment has to be, there was a character you had on. I don't know who played him, but I believe his name was Tad. He had a tank top, he was kind of like a surfer bro guy, but the best part about it was he interviewed this uh, person in the audience, this lady that was just unbelievable, just a perfect find, and it was awesome. And that was my favorite moment. So Tad, what we gotta have you do is you're gonna, you're gonna tell us the best you can remember about a song and see oh, yeah. if Brooks can guess it. Let's I can't, go. I can't. It's like a pretty spirited oh, song, I don't know. It's, it's the name of a girl. Nope. <laughs> no. Well, no. Uh, nope. Well, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to let you roll be, with this, Tad. Be, it might be. All right. So, if it's not taste, what else is there? It is uh, not smell, you said? It, no, it is. It is smell. <laughs> smell. It's smell. Smells is the first smells word. Smells like Casey. Good. <laughs> All right, Brooks. Smells like. And then, um, so if you're like a teenager, <laughs> but you like shorten it, what would you say? Smells like. Teen. Teen, yeah. Tina is my girl. Tina is my <laughs> Well, okay. Uh, okay it smells that, like teen. You got that part. And then if like a cheerleader's like got a lot of S P I R I T. Pep. 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 <laughs> Whoa, Tina okay. Is my girl. So we got, got smells like teen pep. I think that's close enough. That's like Maybe teen. that was the yeah. That's right! Nirvana smells like teen <laughs> spirit! Right. So I've been to a bunch of shows and they're all great, but a few of my favorite moments have been um, the crazy ass drinks that they made me taste blindfolded. Like, uh, shoot, I don't even remember what it was. It was like mustard soda. That does not taste good. <laughs> uh, Could you? <laughs> that is correct. No a guess guesses. on what flavor that might be. Garbage. <laughs> Close. White women everywhere love this stuff. Pumpkin spice? <laughs> <laughs> I should give it to you for that. Uh, it lives it is in audience. Hidden you want to say it? Ranch. Ranch dressing oh soda. We'd love to see that clip of you in Laurelhurst Park for your training wheels episode where you do your slip and slide. Keeping Portland weird and beard. The Portland Beardsmen have raised over $2,000 to help lonely cats in the Portland metro area. We're down here at Laurelhurst Park till 7 p.m. So come through and you can see me and these weirdo beardos. Slide down, you'll have a perfect time. This is Aaron Ross for KDUM News saying, if you can't beard them, join them. Slip and slide, slip and slide, slip and slide, slip and slide. Hands down, favorite memory would have to be when I won the karaoke contest at Dante's. I believe I sang ACDC's TNT and fucking killed it. And everyone voted for me, and I got to sing with Aaron's kick ass jazz band. It was awesome. I try, I try. Is the fog machine on? Is the fog machine? Yeah, man, it's on. It's your fog machine. You got it. You bought right, it. I, knew, I was just fucking with you guys. I, I, totally, knew, I totally knew it was a fog machine. I'm just fucking with you. We need to hurry up because this bit's going way too long. The show's not going to be long. It's going way too long. Oh, man. We got to speed up. So selfishly, my favorite <laughs> Who's the Ross show was the first one I ever got to perform in. Um, didn't quite know what I was getting myself into, but it was the most fun. I was Mary Poppin' Pills during a spring cleaning related episode. A spoonful of medicine makes the sugar go down, the sugar. Spoonful of medicine makes the 
Hi, I'm Ed Foreman, inspirational speaker and author of the best-selling book, I'll Make You Better, because I'm better than you. We got to play Ed Foreman's son, Bed Foreman III. My dad and I have so much fun together, but you don't have to take my word for it. Foreman in Compton. Hey everybody, it's me Ed Foreman, and welcome to beautiful Compton, California. Jacket, it's a nice jacket. I, I stole this from Craig oh. Sager. We're going to call you white out, all right? Oh. White out. Oh. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Look, I got a new nickname. White they out. call me White Out. Hey. You know, I like that? Yeah. Oh, I like that. Hey. All right. Well, Compton was definitely in the motherfucking house. Uh, thank you, friends, so much for for being with us and giving us all of those memories. That just makes me so happy. Um, it, it's crazy what we've been able to do over the past a dozen years and 800 episodes. Thank you for coming in and celebrating. And look, Louis, which way? <laughs> look over here. Check all of this out. Huge show tonight. Huge show tonight. Uh, a big celebration is we have uh, hip hop legend Slim Kid Trey of the Far Side joining us tonight for his seventh, count it, seventh appearance on the program. How crazy is that? Plus, every band leader we've had over the past decade plus JP Downer, Scotty Wittenberg, Justin Chase, total badass jazz dad, rock masters who have had the best seat in the house for everything we've done, are joining us for a little band leader roundtable. And we got a bunch of games too, but allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Ross. That's right, Aaron Ross, your comedy boss. A1 since day one, because I got that sauce. I'm Ross. And next to me, my, to my left is Kanye West, who's, like, who's just like falling over in cutesy mode. Uh, let's say hi to everybody, yay, yay. It's a Kanye Westy, my bestie, a.k.a. Yeah, yeah, a.k.a. Best Day Ever, a.k.a. Adventure Pup, a.k.a. Leprechaun, yeah, a.k.a. Kanye K47, a.k.a. Horse Pup, a.k.a. Number One Good Boy, a.k.a. W.A.P. Wap, 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 white ass pup. There we go. <laughs> it's a good boy. Who's this best boy? He, oh, a.k.a. Shark Pup. We're getting a little Shark Pup sighting tonight. Shark pups in the house. All right, Kanye, we have so much show tonight. And we know that you guys are going to love it. Kanye is, is going cray cray for it. Are you going cray? Are you sneezy boy? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, it's a thing. We have a thing, clearly. Um, normally, my mom has been here. So we are at my mom's house. But for those of you who turned in last night, you guys know that uh, my mom, for her 75th birthday, just went to the Caribbean. So everybody, say hi to mom who's watching right now, and happy birthday. She's celebrating and taking the month off. She's taking the month off. What a Ross. What a Ross. Um, I think it's 
game time. Don't you guys think it's game time? It's game time. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we got a we had a game we played last night that we just realized we had to double up with. It's tonight's a double up show. We were like, you know what? Let's just run it back. But let's fill in the gaps with new materials so we don't look lazy. Um, so <laughs> we got a game for you, as you can see. That, yeah, 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 eight or 800. We're celebrating 800 shows. So what we did is we got a series of items from eBay, and they cost either $800 or $8. It's tough to tell, man. And we know everyone out there during this pandemic, you know, like money's tough, but every once in a while we get that like, you know, that stimmy cheese, you know what I'm saying? I know another one's coming. I'm going to be out on eBay just getting some, some dope-ish. So we want you guys to play along with us. It's time for eight or 800. Let's get item number one on. We want you to guess uh, the price of this. Is it eight or $800? Put number one with your answer. This is the Whitley Bay Elf Collection in Santa's Workshop. Look at that right there. Easily made by some eighth grader at a, a Christian middle school. This is a horror, Whitley Bay. Apparently, a very accomplished uh, Christmas time <laughs> diorama creator. Uh, and so, we want to know number one, does this cost $8 or $800? Kristen says $8. She's going low. Dax says $69, which would be correct if this was show $769, where I was vetoed. In the idea of we have to make 69, 69 references. We got to 32. Um, well, I'm here to let you friends know, as the, as the guesses are coming in between 8 and 800, that the Santa's Workshop costs $800. As hard, as hard to believe as that, as that is, 800 bucks on eBay gets you this magical elf collection in Santa's Workshop. Let's move on to number two. This is more our speed friends. Damn. The original NES Super Mario Brothers to Mario Madness cartridge. I still have my classic NES, the gray box. You always got to blow on the, you know, the cartridges or, or on the box itself. It was definitely a good early lesson for making sure you get some of that WAP. So let's Let's, let's say it's at eight or 800 right now is the question du jour. Kristen says definitely $800. She's mad confident. Three exclamation points. What do you guys think out there on our live stream? I want you to guess. This is number two, Super Mario Brothers 2, Mario Madness. Ashton feels like it should be 800, he says, but he's going to guess eight. And that's the crazy thing. I've, I remember like... 20 years ago, when all the new systems were coming out, old, washed, uh, you could get like Nintendo cartridges for like a dollar. But retro shit, it's changed, my friend. It's changed. So let's see. A lot of guesses for eight here. Jenna says eight. Michael Jordan says eight. Beverly says 20 because she doesn't get the game. Seth says four because he doesn't get the game. D'Emmanuel says one dollar per bit. And I wish that was true because it's eight bit. That's mad clever, D. But you're wrong. You're wrong. It's $800, my friends. 800 bucks for that original copy of Super Mario Bros. 2 Mario Madness. And my guess is there's a chance that's the original Japanese version that was different than the American version, which was supposed to be the American version, but they had copyright issues at the time with the crew, and they couldn't put out the typical, like, uh, what was it, like Donkey Kong, ladder climbing, sort of brick smashing Mario Brothers. So they, they ended up using a different game's uh, like whole like game plan with like the pulling beets, radishes, and eggs and weirdo things, and they just threw Mario into it. So technically, Mario Brothers Two isn't really Mario Brothers. Poof, I just blew two people's minds and lost eight on our stream. Let's keep going. <laughs> eight or eight hundred. This is number three. This is a silver snake necklace. What do you think, Kanye Westy? Silver snake necklace. Is it eight or eight hundred dollars? Either way. I'm buying you one, baby. Okay. Let's see. This is number three. This is the silver snake necklace. Where are we going with on this? Number three, eight or 800. Oh, Kristen said the princess can float in Mario Brothers too. That's crazy dope. I did not know that. Uh, Kristen says $8 with Groupon. Ashton says $8. Sahara says $8. Wow. 
People are feeling a bargain here. But it's silver, you guys. But it's silver. Beverly <laughs> Sandretos is $8. Okay. No one was fooled. Yeah. It's just eight bucks. There's a cheap necklace. <laughs> you can get that from uh, some woman named Karen out of Idaho. All right, let's keep it going here. This is number four. This is, this is technology. This is a Tascam US 600 digital recording interface. Eight or 800, this is four right here. I like that Ashton said in regards to that necklace that it would be 800 on Etsy. That's right, on eBay you can get it for eight. On Etsy they would give all these descriptive words of why it's so great and it would cost $800. This is number four. What are we looking at here? It's a lot of channels. You can record, digital recording. You got, you got all those channels. Did I say that already? I don't have a lot of intel on this device other than it's, it's tech. Sahara says 800 for this one. Uh, depreciation is what Jose is saying. Oh, Beverly says definitely 800. And Kristen's saying 800. Yeah, and I thought so too, right? Like, sounds like a piece of equipment that you would add to your whole at home recording, which is perfect for the pandemic. But no, you can scoop this bad mother on eBay for $8. Sweet Ocho deal, my friends. Sweet Ocho deal. Let's get to number five. Eight or 800. Boom. This is a Chinese Quang Tung Arts and Crafts box. It's, I know. <laughs> I paused. I think I had like a small stroke after seeing it. Uh, and then the, everyone, every, my whole tech crew was like, there's more you can say about it. It's embroidered silk. And there are koi fish on it, two koi fish, like Ouroboros that are going to eat each other. Yeah, that's a good reference, right? There's a song that one of our band leaders, Justin Chase, had, and I, I was doing research on my, my, my band leaders. I was like, damn, I learned about Ouroboros. It's like essentially the snake that eats itself. Yeah. All right. Two people know that. They're in the room here, and the rest of the people are running for the hills. This is uh, number five, the Chinese arts craft box. Sahara says $8. Jose says he's coming over to the house right now. Uh, Seth has the joke of the night. Everybody have fun tonight. Everybody quang tongue tonight. That's right. Yo, Jose says 800 because the koi. Don't be koi, Jose. Uh, Beverly says eight. And guess what, Beverly? We got fooled on the last one, but you didn't on this one. Yeah. Another $8 steal of a deal. That's right. For eight bucks, you can swoop that bad mother on eBay and you can put your silver snake necklace right inside. All right, let's get to the final one. This game is eight or 800. And what you're doing is guessing whether the item costs $8 on eBay or 800. And this right here, this is the chocolate. <laughs> God damn that picture. Oh, oh my goodness. The chocolate window quartz. 7.75 inches. Yeah, I bet. So, so someone's these quartz, these quartz are always, these quartz, these quartz are always adding an extra inch. I'm not, I don't know if I'm buying it, but are you buying it for eight or eight hundred? And yes, there is growth interference. <laughs> So what is that supposed to say? It's supposed to be bigger than 7.75? That sounds like an excuse I made after too many whiskeys. I had growth interference. And by the way, we referenced the Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion song, WAP. Uh, but I would like to say that I'm putting out a new hip-hop song with Kanye Westy called Chocolate Window Quartz. <laughs> That's right, that CWQ Got that CWQ girl, 7.75, and that's with growth interference. <laughs> Careful now. Uh, Kristen says 800 on this one right here. A lot of people aren't sure what we're dealing with on this quartz. They're perplexed by the chocolate window quartz. They're staring at it going, my God, I've got a little, I got WAP after looking at that CWQ. Jose says the chocolate one's so 800. Rick's saying 800. Sahara's saying 800. And you know what? You're right on this one. The legend, the 7.75, always <laughs> shiny and hard. That chocolate window quartz is $800, my friends. Good guessing. You guys did real well on that bad boy. Thank you guys so much for playing along. Eight or 800. 
We're celebrating show 800 tonight, uh, show number two in a row. So if we seem loopy, it's because we've been doing this for 48 hours straight. <laughs> you didn't get to watch, you know, the other 45 hours that we've done, but we've just we've basically been on a loop in the living room. I feel like we need more balloons coming this way. Let's keep that. Let's keep that going. As I tell everybody, get out of here. <laughs> As I tell you guys, please uh, share the show. If you're watching the program tonight, we would like you to share the show. It's your gift to us. And just share what we're giving to you guys so more people can have the gift that is Ross. And simply, you just go, you click the share, and tell people why. Because we got the illest hip-hop guests in the land. Last night, we had two-thirds of Diggable Planets. Tonight, we have a quarter of the far side. We got games, man. We got memories. We got balloons. <laughs> so let's get into it, baby. One of my all-time favorite guests. Here is Slim Kid Trey from the far side. He's back. He's back, everybody. Slim Kid Trey, formerly What's up? of the What's far up? side, currently trademark, always himself. Always uh, myself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for, for being back with us. You were with us back in spring. We thought this whole 2020 was crazy. Now here we are in August, and it seems crazier 2020 more <laughs> you know right Jeez. we've had many of these yeah uh, we, left, we left a lot of breadcrumbs you know, we, we, you know. <laughs> we've left a lot of a lot of breadcrumbs but not a lot of bread left man we we snacked quite a bit during our six appear your six appearances on the show this is number seven uh, right and in 800 and i i looked back you actually were on show 300 and now that's crazy. 800. And the first time you came on in 2011, I was still playing the character, the inspirational speaker of Ed Foreman. You yep. came on, you, you did run in backed by our band and yep. let me basically be your hype man. Oh, what a pity, got the glass titty, filled up with Kool-Aid, just for the kitty. Did I everything, Can't depend on friends to help you in a squeeze, please, they got problems of their own. She keeps on passing me by. Who did you meet early on, you know, that maybe you grew up with or that you were like, oh my gosh, I never thought I would meet this person. I have to say Quincy Jones, cause like when I met him, it, you know, it was big for me. He is the route to your first smash hit, Passing Me By. Exactly. He, he you, you, were, you sampled him Exactly. For that beat. Did you meet him because of that moment? Oh man, we met him a couple times. All right, so when we were first coming out, Far Side stuff, you know, this is one of the one of these shows. Like we were, um, we were just busting out, and there was a show we had with I think um, Dres from Black Sheep was there, uh, LL Cool J was there, and LL Ooh. Cool J, man, that was like he was one of the reasons why I started rapping, and, and him and uh, uh, Karis One, but LL was there, and it was oh, at man. a Quincy Jones event. It was our turn to get on and we got up on stage and we had these masks that, you know, those clear masks that you can't tell what, what the face is like. Yeah, they're creepy. We all had on like creepy clear masks and stuff like that. And um, one, uh, one of the guys was holding a, a trash bag and it had like different things and I forgot what it was, but it was so ill. It was like we were about to rob the place. <laughs> you know Dang. what I'm saying? And it, it was just, it was just crazy. And then, uh, all of a sudden we just started bust we, we just started performing and doing what we do and there was so much energy and so much you know magic and stuff going around and it was like we blew the roof off the place and and we left i believe i, I think we hung around for a few minutes and then we, we took off but um so i went from that moment and we circled over to me being at quincy jones's house and he was telling me a story he said you know you know cats these days, you know, they get excited when they go platinum, just, you know, 1 million copies right. sold. And he said, I wanted to get people out of that mindset of thinking that's, that's the ceiling. And then he turned and he's like, look at this. This is like 64 million copies sold. And that's I was just like, I was like, damn. And he's just telling me, let, don't let there be a limit to how you think 
about music and listening to Quincy Jones and listening to George, uh, George Clinton um, was amazing growing up. And then there was Rick James. So I only have, I only have three that I ever wanted to. And you really met, you, you've met and, and hung out with I've all met, three. Oh man. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> when, yeah. you, when, you say, when you say that, I feel like there's something maybe that would happen with Rick James. I mean, we all know the Chappelle stories and they did get wild. You say, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, like, well, Rick James saved my life one day. He, um, he, stopped, me, he stopped me from. <laughs> no, uh, that's the perfect intro to any Rick James story. Yeah, he literally grabbed my hand for me, uh, you know, about to hit somebody in the head with a bottle. Where were you? What, what, what instigated? We was, at, we was at a Hollywood party and, and Rick James uh, grabbed me and he took me to the side and he said, man, I just got out. He's like, well, you don't want to do that. He's like, that'll mess your life up. And I was like, man, Rick James is, is, is giving me some, some good advice. And I, man, I used to listen to Rick James so much. Like I was a Rick James fan more than I was a Prince fan. Damn. You know what I mean? Like I think yeah. Rick James was the start of, of, of really like, it was the, like, you know how like the essence of people, like you can see them in the old school and it's like, oh yeah, they were like Isley brothers. And he saw me, I was like, I'm Rick James. You know what I'm saying? Like my, my, my thing was Rick James. And for that to happen, that really, that really set me straight. You know, I went home and I thought about a lot. We, we would, me and my friends, we were really tripping out about that. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty wild time. Man, we, we, this should be added to the Charlie Murphy, rest in peace, Chappelle's lineage. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Right? Yeah, that was my Rick James story. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. That, that is wow. Speaking of, of, of Chappelle, another great uh, cultural program uh, from the early 90s is in Living Color. You, you performed there, uh, yep. performed Passing Me By. Yep. Super high performance. Uh, do you remember who introduced you to stage that day? Final recording artist, The Far Side, singing a single, rising to the top with a bullet, Passing Me By. Yeah! Oh, man. Jamie Foxx brings you to stage. Oh, he did? Yeah, and next to okay. him, Jennifer Lopez. Of course. Right. Yeah, man, we were there so much. Because, you know, when we were the Fly Guys. on Right, and I, people need to know this. And we've probably brought it up every other time you've been on. But it blows oh, my man. mind. Because everyone knew the Fly Girls. That was, a th that was like they were on our lockers. Like we all knew yeah. like it was the new dope thing in dancing. But you, as the far side, were yeah. actually... The Fly Guys. I was one of the Fly Guys. Yeah, we had to audition for that. You know, we we worked hard as dancers. You know, and um, dancing uh, was the first thing before before it was yeah rapping. We did a lot of battle dancing. You know, because that's how we used to eat. Because uh, we would battle. We would go on auditions like every week, and that was just to be in a new. Uh, be dancers in a new video uh, okay. that was going on. Uh, Herp Albert, you would see us in Herp Albert, um, North on South Street. There's a, a, a lot of little dance videos that we were in. Um, Guy, I want to get with you video. Really? Yeah, we danced. I'm gonna. That. We're gonna find that clip. Yeah, you we're gotta. You gotta. <laughs> you got a lot to find, man. We was busy. I remember uh, Rosie Perez went to uh, LL Cool J's concert years ago, and uh, this is when it, uh, there was this dance. Um, I forgot the name of the dance. Oh my goodness. But I used to do this dance really well. And she took me up on, on the side of the stage and um, Ella was like, yeah, we got Rosie Perez in the house. And she went out there and then she, um, she's like, Trey, come on out here, come on out here. It was like 10,000 people in the stands. And she was like, bust that, you know, bust that move. And so I was just doing, it was called a tap. And so I was doing a tap and I was killing it. And it was crazy because like, I wasn't, I never, I never think of who people are while I'm doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Like LL is up there for me. LL, LL is, is a godfather, man. I mean, what he did. Absolutely. In the, yeah. LL's a, he's a, he's a, he's a great homie too. That's man, me and L, we, we cool. We real cool. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, I love that dude. I, I, he's like a big brother. You know what I'm saying? Like he's good folks. And I think a lot of the hip hop cats that I've, met over time i always looked at them as cousins or 
Sure. Yeah, family. family. You know what I mean? Because we are in the business too. And I, we, we can, we're the only ones that can relate to each other, mm-hmm. you know, being in the business and like Daylight, they always, they always kept us straight. Uh, be real, always kept us straight. You know, when we sit down and we talk, we sit down and we talk about like, you know, why it's important to, to stick together or try to stick together or, I want to ask you one more story before we close with our signature game. Uh, you brought this up, I think, the first time you were on. So you have so many great stories. But you told me once you're on Korn's multi-platinum uh, record. Follow the leader. Follow the leader. Uh-huh. And, and you have performed, uh, you're on the record, the song that you did on the record, you've performed live with them. I did not, not yet. Well, you did not. You, not you've yet. never done that. Not no, yet. but we, you you have what we could call a spiritual moment with them. You said it was a, a trip, literally a real trip, when oh. you did mushrooms with corn. Yeah, well, so the reason why um, I was doing mushrooms in the first place with corn is because uh, when they asked us to go on tour with us, you know, we were like, oh, yeah, that's what's up, you know. And so the first you know, first couple of runs of, um, you know, traveling with them or whatever. Um, the people at the shows were like, yo, get these motherfuckers off. We came to see corn. We ain't come really? to no see love. the far side. And dude, we would see like a, you can, every hand that you could see was in the air. Just like, fuck you, get off, get off. We were, uh, we were in Philadelphia to be exact. And uh, we, ha- we were up, we were doing our, you know, we weren't even into the sp- first song good and they were just like boom and then fieldy comes out and he grabs the mic and he said look this is our favorite band and we brought them on tour with us and if you guys don't give them the respect that they deserve we're not going to perform for you and they were like okay (laughs) no shout out fieldy Shout out to Fieldy. Shout out to all of them, man. They, they they stood up for us a lot. You know what I mean? So like, you know, it was, that was the temperature, like, um, you know, a lot of the time. And it was funny because like that show in general was like, you know, how many Farside fans were there? Probably three. And they were singing the songs, you know, <laughs> you could see their little heads, you know, like singing the songs and bounce or whatever. It would have been the same but, way. Um, so look, man. Fieldy came out, he said what he said, and then we had to finish our hour set. Oh, and I, oh wow. So that's a long, and they were sitting, they were sitting there patiently because they were like, I'm not fucking this shit up. I'm about to see corn tonight, so I'll sit through these motherfuckers. <laughs> you know? And you know, like much, res- I'm gonna say this, much respect to the, the corn crowd because I get it, man. Like it was like during these times where they were combining like, you know, this genre with that genre to an audience. Sure, like, sure. Cause it's just like, you know, if, if it was flipped around and you know, corn had to perform for our c- huge crowd and they were like, yo, we didn't really come here to see rock. We came here to see some hip hop. The fuck is this? So I got it, you know? And so that said, I was, me and the crew, we were like, you know what? We're going to do mushrooms from, from today forward. <laughs> from way, 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 I should know that. Not that day, from that day forward. Yeah. Like, so I, I feel like. How many mushroom like dates a couple you think shows you that I, I was like on shrooms and, and I, you know, get out there and I rap in and stuff. And then the shrooms would kick in while I'm doing my, you know, oh. while I'm on the show and then I'm like doing my verse and I'm like, but did I really do my verse? Cause I see the Damn. words, go, I, I see my mouth moving, but are words actually coming out? Wow. Damn, but he is kind of rocking it. Damn, it's kind of, it was like just the shroom mind state <laughs> was wow. just in full effect. You know what I mean? So it, it was cool. It was, it was funny, it was hilarious. I have no idea if I actually, if words came out of my mouth that, that night, but the energy was very up. We got to close with our signature game. That's what's up. It's time for Rapper Not Rapper. Little little history for the, the kids out there. You were the first person to compete in Rapper Not Rapper. Lil Poopy is, is real. real. He's Lil very real. real. Poop Lil Poopy is real. Who's Lil Poopy? He's, uh, he, he was, he's a young man and his, he, his name is Lil Poopy. He's real. <laughs> it's time for everyone's favorite rap name quiz game. Rapper, not rapper. Here we go. Rapper, not rapper. Number one, oh. MC Double. Nope. 
Not a rapper. Well done. Well done. Otherwise known as the McDouble sandwich from McDonald's. <laughs> Curveball early. Well done. Hit that one into play. Let's see what we can do on number two. Rapper, not rapper. Michael Scott. I'll say yeah. Well done. Yes, Michael Scott, the boss from The Office that Steve Carell plays. Also, oh. uh, the name of a brand new rapper whose song CNN has 19,000 plays on SoundCloud. Well done. Oh, nice. You, well, an, you an Office fan? You ever watch The Office? I did uh, back in the day, but um, not as not as – I don't watch anything, you know, super thorough. That's okay. Dad brain. We get it. Here we go. Number three, rapper, not rapper, Lil Dude. That sounds like a rapper. It is a rapper. Yes. Lil Dude <laughs> is real. Lil Dude's song PSA has over a million plays on YouTube. Wow. Okay. Well done there. Let's keep it going. Here we go. Number four, rapper, not rapper, the pullout boys. I'm going to say no. <laughs> you are keeping the perfect game going. The pull-out boys are not real. I was like, I didn't put out an album. <laughs> oh. Oh. All right. Uh, let's keep it moving. Number five. <laughs> rapper, not rapper. One, two, three. The G. One, two, oh three. I'm going to say no, but I'm, I'm probably wrong. No, you're right. Perfect game continues, my friend. Yes. One, two, three, the G sounds like a kid show rapper, yeah. uh, but does not exist yet. Speaking of kid show sounding rappers, let's get to number six. Rapper, not rapper, Young Bambi. Yeah. Yeah, Young Bambi is real. Sounds dope, Young Bambi in place. <laughs> Young Bambi's song Puke Slash Blow has 100,000 plays on, on YouTube. There you go. Not the track we expected out of Young, young Bambi there. Puke uh, Slash Blow. This is six out of six. I think this ties your highest score. Hey, that's my highest score. But we have two to go. And nobody, nobody from L.A. to Zoom in the past few years has had perfection. The closest was Open Mike Eagle got seven. Oh, Let's keep it going. Number seven, rapper, not rapper, Gunu. How you spell it? Good question. One word, G-O-O-N-E-W, Gunu. Probably, but I'm going to say no. Oh, you should have gone with the probably. I know, I know. Because it's a rapper and Gunu is also friends <laughs> with Lil Dude. <laughs> Together, Gunu and Lil Dude made real steppers. Uh, yeah. which has over 700,000 plays on YouTube. Who knew I would miss that? Oh, who knew Jerks. the goo? <laughs> 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 oh, you slipped on that goo. Oh. <laughs> and then finally, nonetheless, still an epic score. Rapper, not rapper, the rappers. I'm going to say no. That is correct. The rappers... Not rappers, but did you know that the rappers <laughs> was one of the original name considerations for the far side? <laughs> Probably, yeah. Dead ass sure. Imani in an interview years ago know, said on yeah. 510 Radio, <laughs> the rappers was one of the names being considered. Ooh, I'm so glad we didn't do that. We... <laughs> We had like we had like a hundred names going down a list. And do you remember any others? Um, we were gonna be the beat junkies. Which has happened. Yeah, that did happen. You know, but we were like, yeah, we were like beat junkies. We were two for two already. So we were two for two and then there was front two for two. So we're like, uh, fuck that. <laughs> and so we two, had to change our name. Two. Front two for two was a name of a band. And we had to change our two for two to something else. And that's why that happened. And uh, I think Farsai was the best fit. There are a few dudes more genuine uh, than you. And I, I'm, I so much appreciate you. And uh, thanks for continuing to connect with us during pandemic. And yeah. there'll be many more of these things in the future. And, and we had that good talk yesterday. And, you know, that, that yeah. TV show is nigh, friend. So uh, mm. Trey's helping make it happen. Everyone out there is helping make it happen. And, and, yeah, and, and you, me, what? 
Oh, exactly. No, make it happen. <laughs> Keep making right, it happen. Man. Have have a great night, man. And yeah. uh, much love. Love you, much buddy. Much love to you, bro. All right, now. Peace, Peace. buddy. Peace. Oh, man, that slim kid Trey. Ooh, baby, that dude makes me smile. Yes, baby. All smiles around for me and Kanye Westy getting to kick it with the hip-hop legend. That was the inspiration for the very first rapper. Not rapper. You guys are partying with the best right now. Me, Aaron Ross, your comedy boss. Kanye Westy, my bestie to my lefty. Thank you for kicking it with us. This especially, you're like, yo, who's the Ross on a Monday? Yeah. Now a case of the Mondays is the dopest. Uh, we decided we want to do a double episode to celebrate our, our 800th show. So here we are with show 801. We're partying hard. Kicking it with y'all. More guests, more surprises, more archival video. Thank you for kicking it with us. Uh, we know you guys are having a great time. I don't know if you're having as good a time as me and Westy are having, man. But I'll tell you what, nothing makes me happier than doing the show, and that's how you get to 800. That's You do what you love. Yes, it's time for game number two. It's called 800. That's right. This is a food calorie quiz game. We want to ask you guys a series of foods, right? We're going to give you food. And you got to tell me how many calories do you ingest when you eat 100 of this type of food? It's called 800. Play along in the comments, and here we go. It's time for game time. Number one. Fried chicken breast, 100 4.6 ounce pieces of fried chicken breast. How many calories are in that if you ate 100? For our 800th show, how many calories if you ate 100? Kristen says 33,000. Michael Jordan says dope LT punch. <laughs> That's a graphic terminology. Uh, Ashton says 3,301. Elliot says 8,000. No doubt there's a lot of calories in this. Uh, my mom is trying to figure out how to comment. Dope. Um, from, from the Caribbean. Uh, 69 calories is what Brian says. Nice. Um, Kristen worked at KFC for many years, and she said 33,000. That's crazy, because Kristen, you basically got it. A hundred servings of fried chicken breast is 32,000 calories, and she guessed 33,000, which would blow our minds if she hadn't told us she worked at KFC forever. Inside information. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get to number two on 800. A hundred hard-boiled eggs. How many calories are in 100 hard-boiled eggs? And as you guys start guessing that, my horse pup is going to enjoy. A little bit of apple. A little ASR from Double A Ron. Uh, Kristen says 72 72, 72 hundred calories. Yeah. D. Emanuel says that extra thousand that Kristen missed in her guess is the Crisco. Ken Hansen says 8,000 calories. Elliot Martinez says 6,000. Ashton says 7,600 calories. My God, between Ken at 8,000. Kristen at 7,200, and Ashton coming in at 7,600. It is 7,700. Ashton off by only 100 calories. Good Lord. Killer guess there, buddy. Um, Brian with a 6,900 calories. I like what you're doing there, guy. Uh, we're giving that one to Ashton. Let's get to number three of 800. Wow, 100 Cinnabons. Not Cinnabons. They're called Cinnabons. Get it right. Did you go to the mall in the 90s? Oh, and Lottie Da says that she loves you, Kanye Westy. You got friends all over the place. You're the best boy in the world. Yes, you is. All right, let's get to number three. 
Kristen says 90,000 calories for your, for your 100 Cinnabons. Uh, I like that Jenna said that uh, 100 uh, hard-boiled eggs is 1,400 calories and 4,000 farts. <laughs> you can write for the show. Facts, homie. Uh, Elliot Martinez says 32,000 calories. What else we got here? Oh, good Lord. I literally can't even eat a Cinnabon anymore, let alone 100 of them. Seth says 420. Sick. Yeah. We'll just do this game on April 20th, and it'll just, it'll, it'll just be 8 420 or something like that. We'll get a better pun. Seth, you're supposed to do that. Uh, Ashton says 90,000. And I'm here to let Elliot know. Oh, Nicole's got a good guess. 8,900. Yo. But peep this. Elliot was the closest. He said 32. And the answer is 28,400 calories for 100 Cinnabons. So, which is just crazy that the chicken, not even in the biggest portion, right? Like the chicken portions in the first one for 32,000 calories was 4.6 ounces. And somehow Cinnabons, Cinnabons are, are less. That's insane. All right, let's move on. This is a good one. Number four. Number four. Jenna, good guest under the wire. Look at that. It's the Big Mac, you guys. Unofficial sponsor of my dinner tonight. Psych. Uh, number four, if you ate 100 Big Macs, how many calories? For number four, if you ate 100 Big Macs, you know that Joey Chestnut could do it. That old knob gobbler from the hot dog competition. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know the last time I had a Big Mac. I mean, it's got to be like 20 years, but it, like you can see it sweat. It is, it's, it's horrible, unless they sponsored the show. Uh, number four, Kristen says 55,000. Jenna says 30,000. Uh, wow, wow, we're getting a lot of guesses here. 28 coming to uh, Elliot, 57 for Ken. Nicole says 72. Ashton said he missed a zero on his guess. I don't even know what your guess is anymore because the comments are coming so fast. Uh, this is, these were great guesses. Uh, 70,000 is Ashton. Uh, check this out. Kristen said 55, and I thought she had it on lock. I was like, yo, she nailed the fried chicken. She crushed the burger. It's 56,300. But then who... Right at the wire, came in with 57,000. Ashton's dad, Ken. Shout out to God, Ken, coming in. Smashing down 100 Big Macs. And now, and Brian, shout out to Brian's guest, which was 42,069. Uh, let's keep it moving. I like this guy. I don't know this guy, but I like this guy. Uh, let's get to number five. This is 100 cups of watercress. There it is. That's Nastortum Aficional. I'm sorry, I was trying to read the monitor, and it's hard to see. I nailed it, is what I've been told by the room. Uh, this is number six. No, five, 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 five. Uh, 100 cups of watercress. Sweet, greeny watercress. Kristen says 500 calories. Wow, that's a remarkably low guess uh, on this one since we've had that. Oh, Brian says zero calories. Brian, so Brian, by that, Brian, why didn't you say 0.69 calories? You got to stick with your theme, my guy. R rookie move, I understand. Ashton says, Ashton nailed it. We have 300s and 400s coming out uh, and 500s, it's 400. Everyone was so close, but Ashton got it on the nose, my friend. Kanye. You're falling off your little apple box. <laughs> Boop. On the nose. Kanye. Boop. On the nose. Uh, great job, Ashton. That's been 800. <laughs> thank you guys for playing along. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's get to our next. What do we want to do? Oh, throw balloons at me. I dare you. Ah, how, 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 Kanye, whoa, we're under party balloon attack. This is our 800th show, you guys, and I'm under party balloon attack because we party hard, and we're celebrating here live from Mom's house in Portland, Oregon, where we've been doing every show during the pandemic. 
Every single week, we doubled down this week. We had to do a bonus uh, program on Monday for you guys. There was just so much to celebrate, so many people to talk to, and there's no one that's had a better seat than my band leaders. That's right, everybody. Uh, Over a decade ago, we started having a, a house band that was way better than the show we were doing. Like, consistently. They were the best part of the show. And I had no problem with that. I started catching up, and we did some amazing things where we had epic musical guests like Slim Kid Trey tonight who was willing to come in and perform on our show. I would never think growing up a member of the far side would perform on our show, have their beats played by my band, and let me rap with them. There's so been so many more great memories. I said before, they had the best seat in the house. So... We had them come over to mom's house tonight, and we asked them some questions about their time as band leaders, how this all began, where we're going, where we've been, and uh, this is really cool. These are some of my favorite people, integral to the show. Please enjoy our band leader roundtable. Hey, oh my goodness, my beautiful boys. (laughs) Our Who's the Ross band leaders, J.P. Downer, Scotty Wittenberg, Justin Chase, thank you guys so much for coming to celebrate show 800. Yo, great to be here for sure. So so great. The most man, the most laid back band leaders too. <laughs> it's totally in form. I'm like, yeah, whoa. they're like, excellent. That's part of being a band leader. It's finding yeah. that balance between you and us. Exactly. I mean, you, <laughs> you guys are that. You're my rock, baby. You're my rock, figuratively, and literally. Um, tell us about time being the who's the Ross Just a chase. <laughs> Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. I'm rocking my beard, putting suckers in fear. JP, I'll start with you because you were the original band leader and you have a good story about how band leader wasn't even something we'd particularly thought of, but you did. Tell us about it. Yeah, well, I um, used to have a different band every week Mm -hmm. uh, that would come in and, you know, play their own songs, but also play the music for the show. And uh, my band, Voltronic, did it a couple of times. And then I was kind of thinking about something I'd like to do. And one of the things was be the band band leader for a show like that. And I was like, well, I know a guy that has that. And then I kind of procrastinated on contacting you for a while. And then I ended up just randomly seeing you playing drums at some weird show. <clears throat> and I was like, well, <laughs> it's a sign. Let me get a hold of this guy. So we talked about it. We had a meeting and I was like, I think you need a band every, every week, the same band. You need a theme song. You need bits. You need things going like that. Yeah. I mean, you came up and said to me and said, I want to be a talk show band leader. I thought, hmm, that seems kind of tough to wait. This nut job actually has that. Yeah. We did it together for six years. And yes, you created the theme song. And that's one really amazing thing about the show is we have, I think, the best theme in late night. You, you, you composed that, and it has carried on and endured from band leader to band leader next to, Jay, uh, to, to Justin. Um, and it's incredible how the different clientele of, of the different bands just kind of adapts and, and you know, throws their own little salt bay into <laughs> um, the theme song. After uh, JP, Justin, you came in, and, and to this day, we still work in, in Portland. Most recently, we did our Tatas for Toys uh, benefit where we raised 10 grand uh, back in, in December. Tell me about the, becoming the band leader. You'd been a musical guest and had, had uh, played in with JP, but you took the helm. What, what, is, what was that like when you jumped in in 2016? Yeah, well... Um... Since I had played, I think I had done the show maybe three times already with JP as band leader. Mm. Um, And maybe even, I think the first show that I did, actually, I played duo with Tony. There was no bass player. 
and we drove down to Silverton, Oregon to do a show at a random oh, road uh, gig. at a bar in Silverton. Um, oh, which that's was, right. Which was great. Yeah, we interviewed their mayor. Yeah, yeah, which was awesome. Um, but point being that by the time I took over the show, I like, I didn't really have to innovate. I just did. I just did my best JP <laughs> and brought like a few different tunes to the show. And it was, uh, it was golden. It, it was too easy. You, you, JP definitely lays the groundwork for all of this. And I even remember when Scotty ends up getting the show, uh, I think, JP had watched one of the episodes or had seen how the theme was and he, he had some notes. He's like, nope, hold on a second. Like that's, that's, that's a little off. That's true. I mean, hey, one little, you know. Well, we weren't playing the melody, I remember. We, we never played the melody. We were just shredding our way through it as quick as we could. And, <laughs> and JP had a few things to say about that. You can understand. <laughs> uh, music has been such a key part. Musical guess. Uh, something that, that, you know, other talk shows have music. They don't necessarily say, hey, bring your musical guest and we'll take care of them. We'll be the backing band, the white roots, if you will. Yeah, what we've been able to do with hip hop music where you might have just had a sample that played through a track and now you guys are are embodying that, like you're taking that on. And yeah, doing our best, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, your, your best is something else. Like, I, I mean, so, I mean, I, hip hop artists in, in Portland started playing with bands based off of you and Justin, you know, backing them and being like, this is how you have to do live music. Like, that's cool. It was like revelatory. Justin took on an even another level uh, in that there was sometimes a fourth band member that would be behind the bar of Dante's. T tell us about that. Yeah, Sunshine, the guitar tender. <laughs> We had a guitar tender. Um, yeah, which was which was hilarious. And <laughs> awesome. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess so that people can understand, uh, we had a bartender who worked every Tuesday night, the night that we did the show, who was like a, like a super shredder, Ibanez playing, spiky guitar playing dude who had a wireless rig set up so that he could like, finger tap like kind of just shred while pouring people drinks and uh it would just come off of the stage and uh uh sometimes at unexpected times and uh, yeah, yeah you gotta go with it It's you were cool. saying that he would sometimes come up to you and hand you a piece of paper while I was doing an interview that would say something like what he wanted to do. Yeah, usually, which was um, to his credit, because he knows my number, uh, he would bribe me with like a with a beer or a tequila shot to like <laughs> kick into some blues jam at a at an unplanned time during the show uh, so that he could shred a little bit which I, I thought was a very endearing. I want to know, what's your, what's your favorite musical moment? Scotty, for you, what's your favorite musical moment? Man, it's hard to pin down the favorite musical moment. Um, I'll, I'll echo what JP said earlier, though, about the, uh, 
you know, you, you never really have time to rehearse these kinds of things. And a lot of the people that you be with aren't, you know, oftentimes aren't usually backed by bands. You know, there's solo artists or uh, or bedroom artists, you know, who who sound great on their records, but aren't used to doing the live performance thing. And right. And, and, you know, it was a blast for us to just kind of have to pick up the pieces real quick and, and make it come to life. Even if it wasn't the original life, it's it's a new life of its own, at least. Um, but, you know, like Austin Antoine and Fat Lip, of course, um, a lot of the hip hop guys were awesome. Yes, and it's not a runaway. I'm glad I get a chance to rock with your mother for Mother's Day. So, by the way, um, I'm having fun. I'm gonna say you raised an okay son. I mean, he's here for the occasion. Can't keep running away. Can't keep running away. Can't keep running away. Uh, and the one that just came to my mind, which probably is one of the greatest moments and one of the craziest shows was uh, Kyle Gass. Oh my, I know where you're, <laughs> go ahead, tell him. I mean, okay, so already okay his band was was playing at dante's and our show was going on and we got him as a guest da, da, da. right but Kyle then a tenacious d let's talk greatest shenanigans just the wild anyone can jump out with some where they were like that was that was bonkers i, I have one that was kind of a reoccurring thing and it was the dude Andrew that would chug random, you know, like always some crazy thing. It was either Brass Monkey, but it'd be like an entire 40 of Brass Monkey or the Pepto Bismol drop shot. <laughs> yeah, that's disgusting. What's the craziest thing you've seen on the show, Aaron? Scotty, that's a good question. <laughs> where, I, where we're going, we don't need roads. Um, I think JP touched on it, and we should show a clip of, of the crazy fan who I tattooed. Stop, stop hitting the nose, please. <laughs> No, that is really one of the most wild things. And I forget about that one sometimes. But. You tattooed I, I, a guy? I watched it the other day. I tattooed a guy. This guy said, <laughs> I'll come on your show. You can tattoo me. I, I, it wasn't a pra There's no practice. He gave me a tattoo gun live on the show in character, which means I tend to have to push things farther. And I was just, I think his comment, was, I hate to say this. I think his comment was, oh, you're hitting the bone. <laughs> like on his shin. Oh, dude. What was he has tattoo? lots of bad tattoos already, so, you know. He wanted, he wanted me to tattoo Ed Foreman was here, and then I did it poorly, and then Danger Aaron from Jackass finished it because I kind of didn't have the constitution. Well, fellas, we've had the most bonkers times together. I can't wait to have more, and I want to end by shouting out new dad, Scotty Wittenberg, who just had a kid <laughs> last week. Yeah, dude. Right on. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thanks, Congratulations, fellas. buddy. Justin, Thanks, man. Is it you or me next? <laughs> nice. Stop it. Careful. Uh, <laughs> Coach and Papa John, Papa Scotty, uh, <laughs> Sir Justin, thank you guys so much for reminiscing with us, celebrating 800. And uh, I can't wait to do these things again and maybe incorporate some of some more tattooing and mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Good to see you guys for sure. Yeah. Love you guys. All right, fellas. Later. Peace. Thanks, fellas. Later. Y'all the best. So great man, reminiscing with my dudes. Uh, it was an absolute blast getting to catch up with them. It's crazy. You know, a, a week before the pandemic hit, me and Scotty are down in L.A. at El Cid, and we're chatting with Walter Koenig, the original Chekhov from Star Trek, and then this all hits. But I love how we've been able to adapt, um, do these shows from mom's house, have mom as co-host, uh, Kanye is my bestie from the lefty, and these Zoom you know, chats have given us such great opportunities to not only catch up with old friends like the band leaders, but also like the crazy guests that we've been getting, and we're going to keep bringing those to you guys every week, because Who's the Ross is, is 
I could say not going anywhere, but we're going to go somewhere. Up, 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 baby, we're going up. <laughs> now we want to show you what we were working on right before the pandemic hit. And something that probably won't be something I get to do for a while, but one of my favorite things to do, Kanye, and you did one of these with me at Santa Paws, was to go out and do a man on the street videos. Go into Hollywood, the labyrinth, right? Hollywood and Highland, just a, it's like the, the Times Square of the West. And just go into this labyrinth and just mix it up with people. Go out with a concept, just see what happens. And so we put together a little uh, reel for you guys to just see some of these moments that we hope we can do again in the future. Because sometimes you approach a stranger uh, and not just have a laugh, but they become a friend and, and, or a fan or whatever it is. And we hope to get back to those days. So a quick flashback of those days. Check out this Ross on the street real. How many grains of rice do you think are in this jar? For our 750th show, to honor show 750. 750. 250. What do you drink on a Tuesday? Eh, wine. Can I get a little bit? It's just, you know, it's a long day, you know what I mean? <laughs> in the grocery store, turkey bowling is when you huck a frozen bird down the aisle at the pins. I'm going to make a real full Let's get close. Myself. I'm out here on Hollywood Boulevard hooking dad up with some of the dankest gifts from the Dollar Tree. Give these socks to your dad. Happy Father's Day. You get a little grimy downstairs there, Thanos? Yay! Yeah. Come to me. Come to me, Mom. Do you think there's 750 grains of rice here? No. All right, let's count them. One, two, three, 199, 200. 400. Mm. There's more than 400. Hey, that's right. My name's Joe Wear Out. I heard the Empire, they're going to move their home base to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yeah. You know what they're going to rename it? The Meth Star. Hi, I'm Ed Foreman. You might recognize me as the inspirational speaker and author of the best-selling self-help book. I'll make you better, because I'm better than you. Oh, Diplo and Lady Gaga. <laughs> Black Panther. Exactly. For the 750th oh, okay, show. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> then you put, you put it in 650. More than 650, you're so close. How many? 750. I see what the joke is. 750. I think we just did an entire show right there. <laughs> Oh my god, the one hit me. Hut! Hut! Hollywood! No! Well, hi there. I'm Secret Santa. I'm out here on Hollywood Boulevard to get some things off my chest. You want to know why I dress in red? Why? Because I'm a member of the Bloods. <laughs> you know why Santa's got such a big sack? Why? Only comes once a year. <laughs> now, you want to hear a secret? Yeah. I eat ass. Sa Santa, Santa wants a picture with Santa. Hi, Santa. The truth, the, the truth is, Santa, that I for once want to sit on your lap. Oh, oh, thank you. Merry Christmas. I just got my jollies there. A little Santa on Santa action there. The secret is that was hot. Hi, I'm Aaron Ross, and I'm single and ready to Pringle. Are you single and ready to Pringle? I am single and ready to Pringle. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, I want one so bad. What's like your ideal date look like? This, man you on the bike, Pringles. man carrying Pringles. So, Angela, we, 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 you know what they say, once you pop. Oh my god, pizza flavor. I can't help. But I gotta say, celebrating 800 shows with you guys has been an absolute blast. The last two days getting to reminisce while also having some new amazing moments with wonderful guests. I wanna thank, on tonight's program, a quarter of the far side, Slim Kid Trey. Of course, all my band leaders, uh, new papa, 
Scotty Wittenberg and the ace of bass, J.P. Downer. My main man, Justin Chase, our band leaders last night. Two-thirds of Diggable Planets, Ishmael Butler and uh, Doodlebug and Chris Funk and Nate Query of uh, the Decemberist. Man, it's just been so fun getting to chat with these music uh, luminaries and kick it with you guys and play all these games and do all the fun stuff that we get to do. So I just want to say a huge thank you to you guys for coming and kicking it with us and joining the party and coming to my baller pit uh, down here at Mom's house. Uh, it's been great doing 800. Let's do 800 more. Uh, let's thank Dax Jordan for running all the tech tonight. Lights and sound, baby. Great job. Let's give it up for Kristen Wall doing our production this evening. Thank you, Kristen. And let's also thank Matt Sellers, the graphic godfather, for these sweet graphics. Uh, Seth Lazier helping write the program. Kanye Westing, my bestie. Come here, Kanye. Come here, buddy. Come here. Yes. Oh, the buddy. Yeah, yeah, in the house. Watch your mouth. Thank you guys for joining us. You guys have been great. I was even better. We'll see you Sunday for another Who's the Ross? Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.